Hey people, what's up? Um, so I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to replace uh, linear V brakes. Uh, so today what I'm going to be doing is replacing uh, the linear V brakes on my Trek 7.2. I'm going to be upgrading those uh, Textro brakes to the Shimano Acera linear V brakes. Uh, so it's actually an easy and quick repair. You don't really need any special tools. All you need is the V brake, of course, a uh, small flathead screwdriver, small rag, waterproof grease, a five millimeter hex wrench. Um, if you have it, a cable, housing cutter, otherwise a uh, pair of pliers would be sufficient. And small, um, uh, small drywall knives. Again, not necessary. You can take a credit card and uh, break an old credit card, break it in half, and that'll be sufficient. But we'll get to that later. One of the first things we want to do is inspect our cable and the housing to determine if the cable and the housing uh, need to be replaced. Uh, so I've already done that and I've determined that the cable and the housing on my particular bike does not need to be replaced. So all I'm going to do uh, will be just to replace the V brakes themselves. So the first thing I want to do is release the tension on the cables by pulling back the boot and removing the quick release. Uh, the next thing I want to do is remove the wheel. So now that the wheel's out of the way, we've released our um, tension on the cable. The next thing we're going to want to do is take our 5 millimeter hex wrench and remove the bolt holding the cable to the uh, brake itself. You don't have to remove the bolt all the way, just enough until it uh, is able to be released from the, uh, the, the brake the brake on. Okay, so now that the cable's out of the way and it's released from the brake arm, the next thing we want to do is uh, remove the bolts holding the brake arms uh, onto the fork. Okay, so now that we have the bolts replaced, we want to take care and put those to the side, making sure not to lose the washers that are uh, attached to the bolts. So we want to slide uh, both brake arms off the post. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is take our, sh our rag and clean the post as much as possible. You don't have to add, add any uh, soap or water or any type of cleaning agent. Just take your rag and wipe it clean. Next thing you want to do is inspect each post. Make sure there's no bends or cracks or, or anything in the post themselves. Okay. so. I've inspected each post and I wiped them clean along with the bolts. The next thing I want to do is take my waterproof grease and add a liberal amount of grease to each uh, post and the threads on the bolts themselves. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, uh, in, in my case, I'm going to be replacing the boot and the noodle. Uh, so since my brakes didn't come with a replacement crimp it, uh, end crimpment, I'm going to reuse this, which is why I'm using the uh, cable housing cutter. And again, uh, it's not necessary. You can take a pair of pliers and just round out 
the uh, crimp it in order to remove it from the cable. Okay, so crimp is removed. I'm going to place that to the side. I'm going to slide my boot off the cable. I'm then going to slide my, um, my noodle off the cable as well. Next thing I'm going to do is slide my noodle and boot that came with the new V-brakes onto the cable. Add a little bit of grease to the cable. Hopefully that'll look. Okay, so now that I have my noodle on the cable, um, the next thing I want to do is attach both brake arms to the post. Okay, so when you attach the brake arms to the post, on this particular fork, it has one hole, and you'll notice that the brake arms each have a little nub on the inside of the, uh, of the, uh, of the brake arms. And so when you slide the brakes onto the post, uh, you have to take care and make sure that the uh, nubs go into the, the holes. And again, on this particular fork, there's only one hole. Some, some, some forks have uh, three holes, and if your uh, fork has three holes, you want to uh, put that nub in the centermost hole. So now I want to reattach the bolts to the brake arms. Once again, once again, taking my five millimeter hex wrench and tightening those bolts onto the arms. You don't have to tighten it extremely tight, just enough that they're not sliding um, in or out. And just give it a little tug, make sure there's no, there's no slack in it. Next thing you wanna do is reattach the boot. So the next thing you want to do is take your 5 millimeter hex wrench, loosen the bolt that holds the cable to the brake arm, slide back the washer, uh, place the cable back into the brake arm. Uh, hopefully your cable will still have an indentation of where it was on the uh, previous brake arms. And just uh, snug it up. You don't have to tighten it up for now. Just snug it up there. So the next thing you want to do is reattach the wheel to the fork. The next thing we want to do is take our brake pads and line them up to strike the rim. So again, we're going to take our five millimeter hex key, our hex wrench, and loosen the bolts that hold the brake pad in place. You don't have to completely remove it, just enough that it uh, loosens up. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is make sure that the brake pad is striking the rim and not the tire, or not uh, below the rim. So again, take your five millimeter hex key, and just see, you may want to slide the brake pad uh, up and down on the uh, the brake housing and squeeze the brake pad against the rim and just check where you're at and once you have your brake pad centered on the rim where is it not where it's not touching the tire 
you go ahead and tighten up the bolt, making sure to keep the pressure against the rim so that the uh, brake pad doesn't slide up or down while you're tightening it up. And then you're going to want to repeat that for the other side. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is reattach our cable to the quick release, uh, making sure to slide the uh, cable the quick release clasp onto the quick release and making sure it's in the groove. I've reattached the boot, I've tightened the cable down. I'm going to want to take my crimp it. Since I'm satisfied where the cable uh, placement is, take my crimp it. And again, you don't have to use the same one. Um, if you have replacement crimpings, that's fine. Otherwise, you can reuse it if you have something to loosen it up with. And tighten that down. Okay, that's tight. Okay, so um, I'm checking the adjustment on the brakes. And even though I can get away with that, um, I'm still noticing that there's a lot more movement on the right arm than there is on the left. And then when I check the space between uh, the brake pad and the rim on the right side, I notice there's at least, uh, there's at least a quarter inch of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and adjust the uh, adjustment screw on the left side in order to help balance the two uh, arms out. So I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver and I'm going to turn clockwise on the left side or drive. Okay, so there were two things I did not make clear when recording this video. When you're making adjustments to uh, the brake arms with the adjustment screws, uh, when you turn the screws clockwise, what you're doing is you're tightening the screws, which then brings the arms out away from the rim. When you turn the screws counterclockwise or loosen the screws, what you're doing is you're bringing the brake arm and the brake pads in towards the rim. So once again, clockwise brings the brake pad away from the rim. Counterclockwise brings the brake pad in towards the rim. Also, because after I installed these brakes and checked the adjustments and everything, I had no... Uh, the distance between the brake pad and the rim was uh, ideal in my situation. So I did not need the drywall knives. But if after you've, in, you've installed your, your brakes and you check the distance between the brake pads and the rims and you find that there's a little bit too much distance uh, for you, what you're going to want to do in, in that case is take your drywall knife or an old credit card and you cut it in half and you put each half of the credit card or dry drywall knife between the brake pad and the rim while squeezing and holding the brake arms which then holds the uh, credit card or drywall knife up between the brake pad and the rim and at that point you're going to want to take your five millimeter hex wrench and loosen the bolt that holds the brake cable in place. Pull the brake cable, taking in the slack, tighten down your bolt again, uh, and release the brake arms. Pull the credit card, if they, don't, if they don't fall out on their own, pull the credit card or drywall knife out, between, out from between the brake arm, I'm, I'm sorry, between the brake pad and the rim and then uh, check the function. At that point you should have perfect distance between your brake pad and rim. Brake on. And you can notice that the movement is pretty even at this point. And it's brought... So the movement's pretty even, even now and I've made maybe a quarter turn and that's about perfect. Um, it's taken in the quarter inch space that was on the right side and it's pretty even with the left side. Um, both brake pads are striking the rim evenly 
uh, and they're not touching the tires at all. Okay, so that's how you replace your linear V brakes on your bike. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please enter them in the comment section below. Also, please like and share. You can also subscribe by clicking on the link in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Uh, again, thank you for watching.